I think uh, an epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess, uh, and that it's pretty surprising how little preparedness there is for it. Now, it's tricky because this is a global problem, so you know, how do countries work together, which countries should put up what resources, uh, and you know, every aspect of it, the, uh, the resources to go engage in the, the affected countries, the allocation decisions. As we've seen various flu scares come along, uh, we haven't had a, a super good response. So What I will say, I think we're in the middle of a massive experiment worldwide. And that Where's is, the guinea pigs? Uh, uh, maybe. The experiment is, will people listen to scientists? There's the television. It's all right there. All right there. Look, listen, Neil, pray. Commercials. Not productive anymore. It needs to make things anymore. It's all automated. What are we for then? We're consumers especially in uncertain times. In response to the recent world events, we're taking steps to protect our family with Hyundai Assurance. When you buy or lease a new Hyundai between now and April 30th, we'll cut your payments for up to six months in the event you lose your job this year. Okay, buy a lot of stuff, you're a good citizen. But if you don't buy a lot of stuff, if you don't, what are you then, I ask you? What? I do ill. Do you know what crazy is? Crazy is majority rules. Yeah, uh, take germs for example. In the 18th century, no such thing. Some of the comes along. He's trying to convince people, well, other doctors mainly, that there are these teeny tiny invisible bad things called germs that get into your body and make you sick, huh? He's trying to get doctors to wash their hands. What is this guy, crazy? Take steps to lower your risk of getting sick. Wash your hands often with soap and water. We've talked about things before about washing your hands. He's trying to get doctors to wash their hands. What is this guy, crazy? Every morning when I wake up, I wash my hands. Then I have some food, and then I wash my hands. Then I take a shower, wash my hands, and then wash my hands. And then mommy tells me my hands are clean. And then I wash and wash and wash my hands. Wash, wash, wash your hands for 40 seconds, please. So we'll chase the germs away so you don't cough and sneeze. To wash their hands. Then I touch a football and I wash and wash and wash and wash. And I watch my sister washing her hands and I get an idea to wash my hands. And I wash and wash and wash. But I never get clean. The shame never seems to scrub off. What is this guy? Crazy? That's always the toughest enemy, the invisible enemy. But what? Teeny tiny invisible. What do you call uh, uh, germs? Huh? What? And then it was like a couple days later all these articles started coming out about how there's an unlikely beneficiary. It's the planet and how there's the beautiful side effects of the pandemic and that would be us not harming the planet anymore by our daily existence that harms the planet. And look at the blue skies and the clear canals of Venice because no one's there. And it's just, it's, it's, it's basically 12 monkeys. It's pretty much straight out of that film. Now, cut to the 20th century, and last week is the that right before I dragged into this hellhole. I go in, I order a burger in this fast food joint, the guy he drops it on the floor. He picks it up, he wipes it off, he hands it to me like it was all okay. What about the germs, I say? He says, I don't believe in germs. Germs are just a plot they made up so they can sell you disinfectants and soaps. Now, he's crazy. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's only popular opinion. I think the good news slash bad news is, you know, there's a lot of fear circulating right now. People are very concerned about what will happen. I think it's important to digest the idea that this is very much a means to an end. It's not the end unto itself. I have a hard time believing it was unforeseen and all that. I just say this, we have an invisible enemy. We have a problem that a month ago nobody ever thought about. 
began in healthy looking pigs months, perhaps years ago, spread silently within herds. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. We have a problem that a month ago nobody ever thought about. I don't think anybody could have predicted. But that's not even the point. You know, it's the reaction, it's the response to this uh, that really, I think, is the real purpose here. And the standstill of human behavior, yeah, they're going to say things like, look how good for the earth and the environment. I don't believe those are sincere feelings either. It seems very disingenuous. This has everything to do with the same usual suspects big corporations who pollute the earth so many times over and then blame it on human behavior. Now they're blaming human behavior for this and you know, basically putting us in our places because what this is really about is an upgrade or an altogether new management system of humanity. That's the team that doesn't care about how rich you are, how famous you are. It's the great equalizer. What's terrible about it is it's made us all equal in many ways. And what's wonderful about it is that it's made us all equal in many ways. <laughs> I'm going to be applying for benefits. Yes, you can. Are you going to sit by and wait for the government to just take care of you? We've been saying for years now, but there's got to be a catalyst if they want to get everyone onto these new digital management systems, you can't just bring all this stuff in. People aren't going to go for it. As you can see, everything has changed in a week, and the justification under the old adage, never let a good crisis go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Is just here, and it's perfectly aligned with all of these agendas. And so while everybody is, is freaking out and buying all the toilet paper and panic buying the grocery stores and, and just trying to figure out how they're gonna get through the next couple of months, we are looking at this in terms of what kind of power is gonna be taken from this situation. Because none of these crises that happen ever are put to waste. It's very, pronounced when you look back on it. I mean, that's kind of what 2020 is. It's all this hindsight is 2020. I keep saying that lately because now that I'm seeing this, all these things that I, I wasn't sure about before are kind of clicking together like a puzzle. And all of that came together on Tuesday when I came across this MIT technology review article, which was written by Gideon Litchfield, who's the editor-in-chief over there. We're not going back to normal. Social distancing is here to stay for much more than a few weeks. It will upend our way of life in some ways forever. And I think everybody needs to read this MIT article and see what it is that is being proposed here for how society is going to be managed as this thing plays out that we're seeing now. Yeah, and that author, he did 16 years at The Economist, and he's been part of a number of um, high-level papers. I think he was a co-founder of Quartz, you know, and um, he's also from the London School of Economics. So keep that in mind, you know, with the sort of transparent agenda at play here. I'm not saying he's directing that agenda whatsoever, but he's sort of channeling through this article. And also, this article, which I agree is very key, and, and that's why we're going to read through it pretty thoroughly. It's based in large part on the paper just put out a few days ago, March 16th, 2020, from the Imperial College London um, with the lead author, Neil M. Ferguson. And he deals with epidemiology. That's, you know, the science of the spread of diseases. But what he's really been doing for the past several decades, and he's written hundreds of, of papers, he does the modeling on the spreading of diseases. 
Uh, he's done retrospective studies of the 1918 flu pandemic. He's modeled factors of disease outbreaks. And really what it gets down to is he has predicted and modeled the acceptable levels, acceptable you know, to, from the academic standpoint of poverty and, and in a future influenza pandemic. That's the title actually of one of his papers from 2006. And, and he has paper titles like capturing human behavior. You know, they're very much looking at what, what differences in human behavior will stop these diseases. He's, but now he's written, uh, along with, you know, I don't know, 20 co-authors or something, Report 9, Impact of Non-Pharmaceutical Interventions to Reduce 19 Mortality and Healthcare Demand. And that's not excluding a vaccine or other treatments. It's just this is focused on the social distancing and how to shut down society and while it, why it's okay to accept extreme sort of economic sanctions in the name of controlling these diseases. So uh, all of this has profound implications for human behavior under the sort of cover of 